my soccer universe unbelievably but i could watch actually premier league highlights and that enables me to make a little bit of a better video i told you in my serie a rundown yesterday that i watched three uh, games this weekend only and two of them were premier league games but to be honest we are not starting in the premier league i promised you yesterday uh in the uh, la liga showdown there was one game missing in Portugal, which Benfica won one nil by the slimmest of margins, but that means Benfica is back on top, a point ahead of Porto. And now let's go to the Premier League. First, I owe you the result from Wednesday because everyone was talking about Champions League. I mean, I did not even think about watching that one. City beats West Ham United two nil, uh, rather unexpe uh, rather expectedly. West Ham actually have a pretty tough program. First, uh, City as um, away, and uh, Liverpool in the current round. Where, yeah, I think the big game, most will agree, it was between Chelsea and Spurs. That Mourinho already set so nicely up by saying we are tired and yeah, the scheduling, which I concede to his point, um, is not very favorable for them. Because they had to play uh, late and they had to play on Sunday, they had to play Champions League, and now they play the early game on Saturday. As a coach, you're definitely not no, not have any of the injuries, of course. But it's also a little bit of excuses that you give. I have to say, Chelsea was the better team for most of the game. Uh, Spurs were not really in the game, and when Giroud gave them in the 15th minute, I think um, after. Um, Mason Mount hit the post, Giroud just uh, took the rebound and put it into net 1-0. It was fully deserved. Chelsea could have made more goals. Uh, completely stifled a little that uh, Spurs had and took it uh, to them. And it was only fair when in the 48th, after an assist, after an assist by Barkley, Alonso more or less one time, it was a great shot, um, takes it directly, puts it into net. Game was done and dusted. But then that's where I think one of the biggest scandals this weekend happened, at least from a refereeing perspective. Um, Lo Celso steps onto um, Aspilicueta's um, lower leg and they shot this so often on replay, right in front of Mourinho. In, in addition, you can see the leg bending this way. And I saw it once, I saw, I saw it twice, and I kept showing, 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 showing. I said, I don't want to see it anymore. I went to, I'm very whimsical at those things. Uh, the same thing for the uh, Hugo Yuri's um, injury earlier. This, this was just horrible, horrible. Then they say they're looking at it and I can I can even see that maybe at first it doesn't look look like, but given what we have seen with VAR so far, uh, especially in England, this is a clear red card. Los Celso should have walked. He probably should sure, sure have walked even uh, er, er, earlier, but at latest at this point, Los Celso needed to walk. This was such a blatant uh, attack and an attack on the onto the health. Of Aspiliqueta, where um, I heard people that uh, play soccer say that he was lucky that his foot was on the side. If the studs were in the ground, this would have been a broken leg. And to me, it looked like it. I did, I couldn't even believe that this was not broken. I mean, I, I was a little bit, to, uh, I was a little, a little bit surprised, surprised about that one because it really you saw the leg bending. Kind of amazing what our bodies can do. Um, then Chelsea, kind of after this, the game. <laughs> slow down, you know, you're comfortable with a 2 2 lead, you have chances to make it 3 0. Last time, it's Spurs was a little, little becoming, and rather by accident, Rüdiger produces an own goal. And speaking of Rüdiger, he gave on German TV a devastating interview afterwards. He was booed by the crowd, and given that he has been abused racially before, they asked him what he has to say, and he said, Well, the racists have won. Uh, and so completely deadpan and uh, visibly deflated. Uh, and that he says, yeah, he can have words, but he feels alone in that. And then in addition, kind of saying, yeah, those people are still allowed to go in the stadium. They have won. Uh, it was just heartbreaking, to be honest. This was really... Uh, 
can say more than that. And then he said, yeah, he became a father. And then he says, I will assume, I assume that my children will, he just became a father, that my children will uh, suffer the same abuse. So yeah, uh, not only war was bad, but that was also a, a real, real, real downer. Uh, interesting enough, we will see it exact. And, you know, now going back to war very quickly, um, I'm not against technology. And this is not an error in the technology. All the discussions that we have about VAR is that humans either over-apply the technology or that they completely misinterpret it, as was in this case. This has nothing to do. This is still a human make making decision. And it has also to do that there are only a few video assistant re referees and there's the same referee that made this blatant mistake actually played quite a role in the late game on Saturday as well. More more that a little bit later. This also I, I, I do not understand. And then the referee is right there at the monitor. Let him have a look. Premier League is awful in that sense. VAR also played a role in Burnley Bournemouth where um, first I think uh, Bournemouth scored a goal but it was not given because of a handball. Burnley gets the goal and then in the second half uh, again, Bournemouth uh, from a counter attack where the Burnley players were saying, ah, there, there's a hand, there's a handball, a run onto uh, the goal and make it 1 1 after Vitra had, had given uh, Burnley in the 53rd um, already the lead. And they score and get the equalizer. And then VAR steps in and determines yes, it was a handball and it was a handball in the box. So you get a penalty, which Rodriguez converts, make it 2-0. McNeil late makes it 3-0. But this is kind of the one that really hurts when the others score the goal. You have to take it away and give a penalty or give a, a, a goal on the other side. It's the correct decision. Crystal Palace, seemingly, I have, I mean, not on the folklore, but they finally get a win again. 1-0 over New Newcastle. Valentino Lozaro continues his bad form, getting sent off late. Sheffield United only 1-1 one -one against uh, Brighton. And Southampton finally gets a win um, again. But I have to say, this win, they should have pulled it away much sooner. Uh, it was in stoppage time, and Peperina was all the way in front. And then Leicester City against Manchester City. Rather even quite good game i have have to say although it was really hard hard to watch for me because those bright city jerseys just didn't do it for me um but yeah jamie vardy had a glorious chance just uh alone in front of edison that he where he hits the post um there were chances for c for c as well but um not that many uh leicester was kind of really solid in defense and then there was a free kick, I think by Madison, where De Bruyne puts the hands in front of his face and it hits, of course, the hands. War did not decide on the penalty. And that's the same guy who said it was not a red card. This one I did not understand. I really did not understand because this is a clear, I want to put my hand up to protect my face. This is not what you do. Honestly, uh, I know it's very easy if you have the hand out, then it's easy to give, give a penalty. But uh, if you do like that, you also increase your body. My opinion should have been a penalty for Leicester. Uh, and having said that, then a penalty is given for Manchester City because Pratt was hit by the hand. And again, one of those where, <laughs> yes, I understand why it's given, didn't look all that great, but you know. Uh, be consistent. If you give the one, then you should give the other. Or you don't give any of these. This is just what I don't get. And England, the Premier League, is really getting it wrong. Really get, get, getting it wrong. We have problems in other leagues too. But what they're doing in the Premier League, in the supposedly best league in the world, is just appalling. Fortunately for Manchester City, uh, for Leicester City, Manchester City cannot do anything with penalties. I think they missed no four in a row. Five out of six or something like that. Absolutely crazy. I think it was Aguero who stepped up and hit it right down down the middle, seemingly nervous. And uh, Speichel could say say everything with his feet. And the most interesting thing is that everyone says that the best penalty could take of City would actually be the goalkeeper. Why is, uh, but I think Guardiola is a little bit too he he hesitant. He is one of those, you know, what if he misses and they can launch a count, 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 like, 
get the goal. Your players cannot. I mean, it's already in the head. I really hope it doesn't go to a penalty shootout between uh, Real Madrid and Manchester City. The other Manchester team, though, had no problem with their opponent. Um, a 3 0 win over Watford with Bruno Fernandes showing his skills um, and maybe providing the spark that uh, Manchester United really needed. He got fouled for the penalty, he converted the penalty himself. Uh, Martial makes a really nice finish, and uh, Greenwood, after Fernandes assist, makes it 3 0. Wolves wins against Norwich the same um, scoreline. And then Arsenal Everton was probably. The you know from a scoreline the game of the weekend. I didn't see Liverpool West Ham, which ended three two more that a little bit. Uh, but Calvert Lewin in the first minute with a scissor kick right in the face <laughs> of Vasek Venduzi uh, makes it one nil. I think in every other league other than the Premier League, this is called a called off uh, for dangerous play. However, um, Arsenal can turn, turn around and Ketia in the 27th makes it 1-1 one, one, and then it's the Aubameyang in the 33rd. He really can turn it around after David David Luiz uh, assist. Maybe uh, David Luiz was uh, the one where Calvert-Lewin was in front of him. Um, you know, big hair. That's what I do, I, I, I do remember. But then a really bad looking goal, especially when goalkeeper specifically threw Richard Leeson, gives it right uh, at the stroke of halftime, makes it 2 2, uh, was a messy goal. And you really thought this is going to be a goal fest, but there was only one more goal, but it was scored, I think, within 25 seconds of the first half. Obama Young gets the winner, and Arsenal hangs on despite the huge pressure from Everton. The other Liverpool team, though, Wins 3-2 only against West Ham, one is inclined to say. And I unfortunately I didn't see uh, anything of the game. I know when Alden gave them an early lead, they were playing without Henderson. Then uh, West Ham United actually turned around. They quickly equalized through the op and for Niles in the 54th made it 2-1. And I saw it yesterday when I went to bed. It's 2-1 for West Ham. Wow! Um, Salado equalizes... Um, in the 68th and late 81st, Manet gives them a win. Liverpool from what uh, 11 games left, they need 12 points. That's four wins. I think they will get it. Uh, even more, I think that Manchester City might actually drop the points. So if we look on the table uh, to just undermine that fact, uh, it's really Liverpool far ahead. Manchester City are kind of solid in second place. Leicester City is now third. And the battle for fourth place is a big one. However, again, Manchester City might be banned, or most likely will be banned, so fifth place is sufficient. Chelsea having a little bit of a cushion, but not much. I mean, it's just three points ahead, ahead of United against the lost two, but at least they have now Tottenham is a, a bit uh, dropped. There's more cushion there. Sheffield United didn't go far. Wolves uh, got the win. Ar Arsenal's back in there. You see again this rather broad midfield, and when I look towards relegation, yeah... <laughs> Newcastle might go in there, but I think it's Brighton, Bournemouth, Villa, West Ham, Watford and Norwich that really are in trouble. And it's going to be a, how do you say, a opposite of a sprint to who will stay up. I also said there's nothing, more, not much happening in the Netherlands. Boy, was I wrong about that one. Um, that's it. Gets a win against Wally. I think it was two penalty goals after they uh, got the late penalty goal against Lasko. It sounds, it sounds something like that, I heard. PSV beats Vitesse and then Heracles Almelo beats Ajax. Completely surprising everyone, I have to say. And that means now in the table, we have Ajax three points ahead of Azet. And the big game comes on Sunday. Uh, even Feyenoord is not quite out of it. The PSV is also back in, in the mix. So uh, Dutch league, maybe, maybe. Ajax had a rough week. Had a rough week. And just when you thought that Azet had a hard week, now it's Ajax. So no one can really pull away there. Well, that's it for my review for Premier League. Put in a little bit Portugal. As I promised, a little bit um, the Eredivisie. Uh, let me know. If you have anything to add to the content that I provided here, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.